If you've been seeing these cool mesh gradients around and you want to know how to create them yourself, then keep watching this video because I'm gonna show you how to do that really quickly right in Figma and show you how you can even do it with a lot of customization, be able to animate them and a real use case so that you can apply this to your next app design. Let's get into it. So the first way is the easiest and fastest, and it's just through a plugin here in Figma called Noisy Gradients. So I'm gonna open that up. And as you can see, you already have one to choose from here. You can just keep generating new ones until you really like one. So I like kind of this light and airy one. Um, and they'll have different amounts of colors and you can customize these. So say I want a three color one, but I want completely different colors, I could customize those colors. You can also get rid of the noise or add it back in, and you can choose what size you want to import this PNG into your file as. So let's do 2000 by 2000 pixels and hit insert. And you can see here, if I zoom in, it does have that grain to it, which is really pretty. And I could just keep generating these and come up with a whole library to use for a project if I wanted to. Um, but the only downside to this is it isn't fully customizable because you can't move these shapes around. It's just a flat PNG and you can't animate them. So now I'll show you how to do this manually in Figma so that you can really control all of the shapes and colors and you can even animate it if you want to, um, which I'll show you how to do that. And I'll show you kind of a fun use case for a fun idea to maybe use this in an app or web design of your own. So let's start with a frame. We can just use the same size, 2000 by 2000 pixels. Um, and what we're going to do is start by just making some random organic shapes. So I'm gonna grab the pen tool and I'm just kind of making these shapes just as long as they're kind of smooth and organic looking, that's what we want. And then I'm gonna get rid of the stroke and add a fill. So we'll just do purple for this one. And then to make life easier, I'm just gonna duplicate this and change around the anchor points a bit. We'll make this one orange. make this one this like electric green and then let's do one more kind of bigger one that's maybe like a light pink maybe a light purple would be pretty and i think i'm gonna make this like more red okay so now that we have these let's just position them um you know kind of evenly around the canvas and then what I'm going to do is select on all of them and come over to effects, hit the plus button and change it from drop shadow to layer blur. And then once we have that, I'll just hit the sun icon um, and we're going to change this to like maybe 400 could be good, even 500, maybe 450. Sometimes you have to play around depending on your shapes, see kind of just the look that you're going for. Um, it's totally up to you what that is. And then again, I'm just moving these around a little bit. Um, so that's looking pretty good. Now, what we're going to do is just pull in a file from my desktop um, that I downloaded. It's just something that I downloaded from the internet that's this grain texture. Um, you can get this for free from a lot of different sources. There's some in the Figma community as well. I'm just layering it on top of all of those and we're going to give it a soft light blend mode. So now you can see we've added this pretty grain and that is looking really good. So you can stop there if you want um, and you can make a bunch of different ones, maybe change up the colors and the shapes. You could have ones with, you know, 10 different colors, just two different colors. It is really up to you. But first, um, you know, I wanna show you how you can actually animate these. Um, so let's say we wanted it to look almost like an orb, like screensaver. Um, what we can do is just duplicate this and then move 
these shapes around a little bit. So I'm just going to even make some like bigger and smaller. We don't want to change up um, the layer order at all. That's really important, but we can make any other changes that we want. I want to make sure this is really in the frame. There we go. And we'll do one more. So I'm just going to kind of make it look like it's spinning. So I'm just going to kind of keep moving these around in a circle while also, you know, changing the size and shape a little bit. So let's grab our blue one. And you can make this really subtle or you could make it, you know, more um, drastic, just up to what you want it to look like. Okay, so I have those there now. And what we're going to do is I'm going to throw this back on if, if you like that look and just copy and paste it onto the other frames and then head into prototype mode. And I'm just going to select on here, grab this plus and bring the arrow pointing to the next one. And we're going to do, instead of on click, we're going to do after a delay, but we're just going to do one millisecond. That's the, the shortest delay we could do. We're going to navigate to frame number two. We want it to be smart animate and we want it to be linear. And I found that 7,000 milliseconds is pretty good. Um, 6,000 is also good if you want it just a touch faster. So we'll see what that looks like. And we're going to do the same exact thing here after a one millisecond delay keep all of these the same and we also want it to loop back to the beginning so same thing after a delay of one millisecond and that should be good so now i'm just going to hit play on this flow we'll go up into our options and do fit to screen and since mine is so large and I have kind of a big um, file in front of it, it's going to take a minute, as you can see, to render. So just give it a second. And there you go. You can see that these shapes are kind of just spinning and morphing into, you know, what we've created here. So I think that looks pretty cool. And you could, like I said, use these as like a screensaver or just, you know, whatever you want to use it for. Um, one thing that you could use these gradients for in general is maybe like a loading um, image. So let's just say that in this app here, um, I made this in a previous video here on this channel. Now, a fun way to actually use this in context in an app could be as like a loading image. So let's say that we have these images here, um, but when you first open the app, obviously it takes a minute for images to load. So instead of just showing like a gray box, what if we showed, you know, like a very lo-fi um, gradient here? So these are pretty small images. These are 131 by 131. So I'm gonna create a frame that is 131 by 131 and I'm just going to do the same thing but this time I'm going to choose colors and shapes that kind of remind me of these images right so let's try at first um, this one so I'm just going to create kind of like a shape here again we're going to get rid of the stroke add a fill and to add the fill I'm going to sample from here so Maybe we have sort of this abstract shape here, and maybe we have some more here. But these ones could be this orange color. So I'm just gonna grab that. And then maybe we even have kind of like a bigger shape here that represents the table underneath this brown. Okay, and then the background is generally white, so we can kind of just keep it like that. Now, again, I'm gonna select all of these, add a layer blur effect. 
since we've got a much smaller um, frame here, 40 is actually good for our layer blur. So we have that. And then I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab this grain and just place it over the top to give it that little grain. So now, what if we had this as our loading image? Let's try one more with this one. So I'm gonna move this layer. We'll make this one this green. You can get super abstract with these. Go. And then there's also a little bit of like sky blue in this one. All right, then once we're happy with that, I'm just going to put the green back. And there we go. That could be another way to do it. But of course, I really like the look of these gradients. And hopefully you like this little tutorial. So that's another way to do it, though. I definitely prefer the look of these gradients, especially when they're nice and full like this. So hopefully you enjoyed this and you'll try this out yourself. I hope you have fun creating your own gradients like this. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and check out this video so that you can learn three Figma secrets that are gonna save you tons and tons of time. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in a future video. Bye.